So in this example, uh, basically what I have is negative times the quantity x minus 3 plus 2 is less than or equal to 3 times the quantity 2x minus 5 plus x. So something like this, a lot of times students will automatically get a little scared looking at it because it seems a lot of work. But if you guys can just go back to the process and just do it step by step. The first step is a simple both sides of your inequality. I didn't tell you to write this down this time, but basically what that means is apply distributive property when you can, and then combine like terms. So the first thing we're going to do is, come, is apply distributive property. When we do that, we now obtain a negative x plus 3 plus 2 is less than or equal to 6x minus 15 plus x. Everybody follow that step. Good. Now the next thing is combine like terms. We don't have to use our inverse operations over here. We don't have to use our inverse operations. Here we had variables on both sides. That's why I had to use the properties of quality. I had to add whatever I subtracted on one side, I had to subtract on the other side. Here I have two numbers that are on the same side. So I can just add them. 3 plus 2 is 5. Over here I have variables. There's a number in between, but that's OK. You can just add 6x plus x, which is 7x. So therefore, I now obtain an equation negative x plus 5 is less than or equal to 7x minus 15. Now, following my, following my ideas of getting the variable, making it positive, which side of the inequality should I solve for my variable green lanyard over there? Right side or left side? What do you think? I, need to, I want to get rid of my variable on the left side and solve for the variable on the right side. Because this is a negative, so if I add an x on both sides, then I'll have a positive variable. Does that make sense? So I have 5 is less than or equal to 8x minus 15. Now I just solve my inequality. So I add 15 to both sides. Ooh, this is a good one. 20 is less than or equal to 8x. Divide by 8, divide by 8. Um, 20 goes into 8. Um, well, it doesn't go into 8 evenly, but I can reduce that. Shoot, I'm not going to have enough room for the graph. Um, I can reduce that. So let's see, I can divide a 4, so that would be 5 halves. OK, so what do you do when you have a fraction? The best thing I'd like you guys to do when graphing a fraction this is very, very important. The best thing I like to do when graphing a fraction, ladies and gentlemen, is when you're creating your number line, you need to understand where is 5 halves? Where is that along in the line? So the best thing to do, I think, visually is to convert this to a decimal, which would be 2.5. So you can basically say, I'm going to kind of put this up here. You could say 2.5 is less than or equal to x. Now, I always like to graph when the variable is on the left-hand side. So I'm basically going to switch, flip everything. X is over here, 2.5 is over here, and the inequality changes. So it's x is greater than or equal to 2.5. You don't need to rewrite it as a decimal, but you need to understand um, the decimal value, or at least where the fraction would be. Because when you guys are graphing this, I don't really want to use a number line with decimals. You can, but I don't really think you have to. The best thing I would tell you guys to do is 2.5 is between 2 and it's between 3, correct? So just make your, just make your um, point between those two values. So I'll do 2.5. It's just going to be between 2 and 3. I like to use integers again. Then this is, this is saying x is greater than or equal to 2.5. So it's greater than or equal to. So it's going to be enclosed. And then all the values that are greater than 2.5 are going to be going to the right. Cool? All right. Now, I'm not going to do the last one because I already did it. So if you guys would